Hello, PA Labor. My name is Sarah Nelson. I'm the International President of the Association of Flight Attendants, and I'm in the middle of chairing my union's convention in Atlantic City right this minute. But I didn't want to miss the chance to give you the flight attendant briefing. I want to thank your President Rick Bloomingdale for this opportunity, and especially for the chance to protest together against greedy, heartless, no-good lying executives who want to rip health care and pensions from under the hardworking men and women who make it possible for companies like Consul Energy to run. Anyone profiting by making someone else poor must face a tsunami force of solidarity ready to wash them away. So congratulations to all of you for sticking with each other and backing a candidate like Connor Lamb, who not only talks about the plight of working people, but embraces the unions that make us strong and able to take on the bastards who want to step on us to make themselves filthy rich. True solidarity is a force stronger than gravity. You prove that in this election. A candidate like Connor Lamb was never supposed to win against the illegal crooked map drawn in an attempt to silence your vote. But there is no challenge too great when we value each other and we work as one. And it is work. It is work to cut through the racial, gender, and sexual biases promoted to keep us at odds. But we must do it if we are tired of falling farther and farther behind. We must do it if we are to learn from the teachers in 55 counties of West Virginia and the CWA members of Frontier Communications. There are no illegal strikes. There are only unsuccessful ones. Wall Street, billionaire financiers, and multinational corporations have worked hard to have us believe that we are in competition with each other, to push us lower and lower. But the jig is up. This year, Equal Pay Day is April 10th. This date symbolizes how much longer a woman must work into a new year just to make what men earned for doing the same work the year earlier. Three months and 10 days longer. The wage gap is even greater for most women of color. But there is no gap if you have a union contract. Everyone is equal in a union contract, and imagine how ready women are to be faithful union members if we welcome them into our movement. Imagine how much stronger we can be if we check our biases and look for leaders in every gender, race, culture, and creed. It doesn't matter who we love, as long as we love. My union had to fight hard to turn our jobs into a career. It was formed to fight sexism and misogyny. We even fought really, really hard to make sure men could have the same rights as women. The airlines sold tickets by marketing us as objects. We fought back at the negotiating table in the courts and on the streets. We defined our careers, and with 80% of U.S. flight attendants organized, we cut our own path. But I will never forget my first week on the job when my flying partner told me, listen, Management thinks of us as their wife or their mistress, and in either case, they hold us in contempt. Your only place is with your flying partners. Wear your union pin, and if we stick together, there's nothing we can't do. That's the kind of attitude that it took to take on big tobacco and win, by the way. In this Me Too moment, we are not only thrilled to put coffee, tea, or me behind us, we see this as a moment for equality. 20% of our flying partners are men. They have stories of sexual harassment just like us, but they aren't speaking up. That's because they recognize this is a moment for equality of women, and their economic power depends on us taking this moment to claim our equal place at the table. The issue of sexual harassment is not about body parts. It is about power. Calling it out means we are ready to claim our power. All of us, for one and one for all. And that reminds me of where I started, with our mine workers, pensions, and health care. Mine workers who dug the coal that lit our cities, warmed our homes, forged the steel that won our wars. Almost all of us were born in hospitals that were warmed and lit because miners risked their lives underground. The United Mine Workers of America made it possible for the vast majority of our unions to exist. We wouldn't even be here without them. But coal mining kills, quickly and slowly. When men and women die underground, they leave families behind. But no one comes out unscathed. Black lung, pneumonia, cancer, emphysema. Paying that debt is what miners' health and pensions are about. That is the commitment that we make to them, and no one will be left behind. 
Before I sign off today, I'd like to ask all of us to remember that solidarity means we leave no one behind. And as my friend Cecil says, workers united can never be defeated. Now, say it with me. Workers united can never be defeated. And one last shout out to my peeps in CWA District 213. Workers united can never be defeated. Have a great convention, PA Labor, and don't forget to hug a flight attendant. Well, maybe we'll go with a fist bump. Bye-bye. <laughs>